Hi, welcome everyone to the Make It Mac. This is the basic tutorial about electronic components as this is the quick and the to the point tutorial just to understand the basic concept. So we will not discuss each and everything in detail but the necessary thing. This quick tutorial is about resistors, potentiometers, switches, relays, inductors, capacitors, diodes and transformers. How and why we use these components, their symbols, their types and the applications of these components. Okay, let's start with the resistors, the very basic component in electronics. A resistor is used to resist the current flow in electric circuits. It works by converting electrical energy into heat, which is dissipated into the air. For example, if too much current flows through an LED, it is destroyed. So a resistor is used to limit the current flow. For manual readings of resistor, we have a color code table. Take the first and second digit and multiply with the third one. There are three basic types of resistors. Linear resistors, non-linear resistors, and variable resistors. In linear we have fixed resistors, carbon composition, wire bound, carbon film, metal film, thick and thin resistors and fusible resistors. In non-linear we have thermistors, VDRs, LDRs and SMD resistors. In variable resistors we have potentiometers, rohistors and trimmers. Now the applications of resistors, resistors are widely used in electronics industries. It is used for current control and limiting purpose to change electrical energy in the form of heat energy to control voltage or drop and also for protection purposes. Second component is the potentiometer. A voltage divider used for measuring electrical difference. If we use only the two terminals of potentiometer, one end and the wiper, it acts as a variable resistor. Here we have the internal structure, the base is the resistive material and the moving component is called the wiper. In the center the wiper is used to measure the difference between both ends R1 and R2. In the examples of potentiometer, it is used to control audio equipment, video motion control, transducers, changing volume, frequency attenuations etc. For the connections of potentiometer, the middle one is the output, the first is the input voltage and the last is the ground. Here are some types of potentiometer, rotary, linear, wire wound, server slider and carbon composition. Third we have switches. A simple switch is a device that makes or breaks the connection in the circuit. 
Here are some types of switches. Single pole single throw switch SPST. Similarly, single pole double throw switch SPDT and DPST double pole single throw switch and double pole double throw switch. Then we have push buttons, toggle switches, limit switches, float switches, flow switches, pressure switches, temperature switches, joystick switches and rotary switches. Understanding the these configuration of switches is really important. This will be uh, helpful for understanding the functionality of relays and uh, the PLC systems later on. Fourth, we have relays. A relay is also a switch that is electromechanically and electronically operated switch. Relay is used where a safe low voltage circuit controls a high voltage circuit. Because the circuit powering the coil is completely separate from the circuit switched on by the relay. Here is example. Below we have a low voltage circuit. This circuit is actually powering the coil. And above we have a high voltage circuit. The high power circuit is switched on by the relay. Relays are constructed with electrical, mechanical and magnetic components. In relay we have a mechanical contact and a coil. When we apply a current to the coil it gets activated. The mechanical contacts gets open or closed by the activation of a coil. Relays can operate with AC or DC currents at common voltages and can control current ranging from 2 ampere to 30 ampere. Here is the internal structure of electromechanical relay. The first is a frame. The, the frame is used for supporting. Then we have a coil. A coil of wire is used for generating electromagnetic field. And the armature opens and closes the contacts. And the contacts are the conducting part of the switch. In electromechanical relays, the contacts are open or closed by a magnetic force. And in solid state relays, switching is totally electronic. so many applications of relay a relay is used to control the high voltage circuit with the low voltage power supply it is used in computer circuits in order to perform the arithmetic and mathematical operations it is used to control the electric motor switches the automatic stabilizers are one of the applications where a relay is used the relay is used for circuit selection when there are more than one circuit exists. It is used in televisions in order to turn on the picture tube with the DC supply. It is also used in traffic signal controllers and temperature controllers. The inductor. The inductor is a passive electronic component that stores energy in the form of magnetic field. Why we use inductor? It is used to block AC while allowing DC to pass. Inductors do not allow the sudden change in current through them. It is used for blocking high frequencies. It reduces the ripple content in the current. The inductor stores electrical energy in the form of magnetic energy. 
conductor that is wound into a coil and when electricity flows into the coil, it generates a magnetic field. Here is the formula for calculating inductance where L is the inductance, mu is the magnetic permeability, K is constant, N is the number of turns of a coil, S is cross sectional area of a coil and L is the length of a coil in the axial direction. Conductor allow DC but not AC to flow through it. Here is the magnetic field generated in a direction, and in the opposite direction, we have a flowing current. If the current is about to rise suddenly, an electromotive force is generated in the opposite direction to the current. It prevents any increase in the current. Inductors are used in switching circuits like DC-DC buck converters. Inductors are used to block high frequency noise. They are used to create resonance, also used in filters. Inductors are used as sensors, can be used to assess magnetic fields or, or the presence of magnetically permeable material. Inductors with shear magnetic path will form a transformer. And there are so many other applications of inductors. The capacitor is a passive two-terminal electrical component that stores electrical energy. How capacitor works? A capacitor is made up of two metallic plates with a dielectric material in between them. Here we have two conductive plates. When we apply a voltage over two plates, an electric field is created. Positive charge will collect at one plate and the negative charge on the other one. What is our capacitance? Capacitance is the amount of electrical energy a capacitor can store. The capacitance is directly proportional to the charge stored over voltage applied. There are three ways to increase the capacitance of a capacitor. The number one is increase the size of the plates.
moves the players closer together. Make the dielectric as good an insulator as possible. There are four main capacitor applications. The number one is coupling. As the capacitor allows AC to pass while block DC, while block the DC component. Similarly, decoupling. It is used for smoothing purpose to reduce the ripple effect. And also for filtering. Capacitors are combined with resistors and inductors to create filters that only transmit signals of a particular frequency. Capacitor is used for power supply smoothing applications. It has audio frequency coupling uses. It is also used for radio frequency coupling capacitors. RF decoupling applications. for tune circuit uses. On number 7 we have a diode. Why we use diode? Diode is a component that allows current to flow in one direction only. The diode acts as a valve in the electrical and electronic circuits. The diode is a polarized component with two leads called the cathode and the anode. Most diodes are made with semiconductor materials such as silicon, germanium or selenium.
There are two categories conductors and insulators. In the middle of periodic table, certain elements are normally insulators. We can convert these insulators into conductors with a chemical process called doping. These materials are called semiconductors. There are two operating regions of diode, N type the negative type and P type the positive type. There are three possible biasing conditions for the standard junction diode. Zero biasing, reverse biasing, and a forward biasing. Working principle of diode In a zero biasing, no external voltage potential is applied to the PN junction diode. In N type, the N side will have a very few holes and more number of electrons. While in P-type, the P-side will have a high concentration of holes and a very few electrons. In forward biasing, the anode is connected to a higher voltage than the cathode and the current will flow from anode to cathode. The electrons and holes move across the junction in opposite direction and the current flows. In reverse biasing, it reverses the current. The voltage at the cathode is higher than the voltage at the anode. All the holes push up towards one end and the electrons to the other end and no current flows. In the last we have transformers. The transformer is a device that is used to either raise or lower the voltages and currents. How transformer works? In the transformer we have a base that is called core and a primary and secondary windings. When a fluctuating electric current flows through a wire, it generates a magnetic field all around it. When we put a second coil of wire next to the first one, the current in the first coil causes the current in the second coil. This phenomenon is called the electromagnetic induction. In step down transformers, we have more number of turns in the primary side. and a very few number of turns at the prep, at the secondary side similarly 
In the step up transformers, we have a low number of turns at the primary side and a high number of turns at the secondary side.